Alright, there are also uh, another couple of masking techniques that I uh, would like to show you. Um, using our um, drag rectangle stroke and an alpha, um, just as we can with um, a normal uh, spots or, or dots stroke, um, we can uh, drag out an alpha as a mask. And so if we uh, hold down the control key, uh, we can drag out the alpha as a mask instead of um, uh, straight to the canvas as, as an addition. And when we, uh, when we have that, um, that alpha dragged out like that, we can then go over it um, with our brush to bring in quite nice sort of subtle texturing. We um, just go over these sorts of details here, and it you can add a lot more control to it then. And if we remove our mask now, you can see that sort of how that looks. And um, as with other um, other masks, we can reverse that mask if we wanted to just have the um, the section that would be inside that alpha coming out as the mask. Now, another um, thing that we can do for masking, and this comes in very handy when we get to this sort of level of uh, detail is if we actually go down to the masking menu uh, we can do a mask by cavity so if we click on that uh, anything which is uh, a cavity meaning anything which is um, carved into our surface um, is unmasked everything that is um, brought out or sort of extruded from our surface is masked and this gives us this sort of um, the, this mask here. What I usually do once I've um, once I've got the mask like this is I hold down control and I just smooth out the edges of this mask a little bit, just to sort of um, give it a slightly uh, less severe um, less severe edge to it. And uh, now, if we wanted to, we could come in with this. Um, Uh, with this alpha and um, if we wanted to subtract we could bring this mask in as a sort of a way to break up the areas that are sort of um, drawn into our mesh and if I just sort of s uh, demask our, our object you can see how it's only um, uh, it's only actually applied that texture to indentations in our in our object. If you wanted it to go the other way, we can of course um, hold down control and click outside of our object, and just to reverse that mask, and then we'd be applying to raised portions. This is also a good way to sort of um, get a rough cavity map for our object, because if we um, if we apply a cavity uh, mask and then reverse it, it sort of gives us that shading, that sort of, um, it's like a, uh, a very um, severe or high contrast um, uh, ambient occlusion map. And so we can see the, uh, the raised portions are a lot easier this way. And one of the things that you can do once you have a, um, a mask applied like this is um, uh, if, for example, you wanted to um, have all of the areas which are indented in your object um, have uh, noise applied to them, and um, so that it uh, it breaks up some of the smoothness. Uh, I actually I might apply it to uh, raised portions of the mask. Uh, just because I, I think that the indented portions of the mask look better if they look like they're stretched uh, between these sorts of the, the ridges of our object. 
Um, so once we've applied a cavity mask, we can go down to our uh, deformation menu. And if we apply something like noise, and yeah, that's a little bit high. I might take that and just apply a noise of and if it is hard to to get a small enough number you can sort of see the example there of how that works um, I might actually go in there and apply a noise of three now if I um, unmask those areas of the object you can see that wherever there is a raised um, ridge there is this sort of rough uh, texture to it uh, whereas everywhere where it is uh, sunken in, uh, it's sort of stretched smooth. You can see that is sort of uh, definitely on this sort of area of our object because it's flat. Um, the very sort of slight indentations that have happened as a result of um, bleeding over from the uh, from working on this surface, you can see that it's applied the um, the texture to everywhere that's that's raised up and uh, left everywhere that's that's indented so that's another technique that you can use and this also works for if uh, we wanted to exaggerate um, various sort of uh, details of our object uh, with this sort of cavity mask if we then went and inflated um, the object you can see that we have this sort of, um, and I'll just unmask. You can see that the uh, the object has sort of uh, swollen out in any area that um, uh, that is raised up. And um, of course, this is an extreme example. We wouldn't always use this this level of inflation if we uh, if we meant it made it sort of uh, something fairly low like. 30. You can see how that sort of adds just that little bit of exaggeration uh, just to just to sort of break uh, make those details um, look a little bit sort of more uh, pronounced. And of course just so that you uh, you know um, you can uh, take a mask and uh, add to it with any other masking technique uh, that you can use. So if you um, say you wanted to add to this mask with um, with this sort of texture, we can draw sort of textured mask onto um, the cavity mask that we've applied. And uh, even if you wanted to uh, go in and draw by hand um, different sort of different portions of the mask. You can you can blend these these different masking techniques together to have um, many sort of uh, different uh, different designs. Basically, whatever you can think of, you can come up with a uh, a mask to sort of have this sort of style come through. And so yeah lots of uh, different tools that you can uh, you can use to come up with some uh, fairly interesting designs